Good day to you preachers of the multiverse. I'm N Sega, and games are something that I love discussing with people. Everyone has their own opinions and their own ways of explaining said opinions, which is what makes discussion interesting just in general, not just with games. On this channel, I mainly talk about the games themselves, but I love going into loads of the things surrounding them. The music, the visuals, merchandise, or the marketing. In this case, the box art. The ads are something else entirely. I love them. I might get to them in the future. No promises. Anyway, over a few videos, whenever those videos end up being made, I'm going to share my opinions on every Spyro Games box art and grade them on those opinions. Yes, grade them. Rather than my tier system that I usually use when I review stuff. And when I say every Spyro game, I mean every Spyro game that has box art, so no like brick foam stuff, even though there are a bunch of those. In this episode, I'll just be talking about the PS1 covers. So anything like Enter the Dragonfly, the GBA games, you're gonna have to wait. Welcome to Spyro September 2024. Help me! Dun 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 Let's start with Spyro the Dragon's North American cover. Yes, I'm covering it before the PAL one, I have my reasons. To start off positive, I like the logo. It uses colours and small bits of imagery appropriate to Spyro's design, and while grabbing your attention, doesn't feel the need to completely take the spotlight. Spyro is front and centre, proudly showing you that this is a game about him. The cover seems to be set in Artisans, the first realm of the game, and likely Spyro's home, with the castle from that area appearing in the background. It's a nice touch if you ask me. There's a bowl from Town Square, I guess? Any particular reason why? So, pretty good cover, right? Well, there are things here that I definitely don't like. First off, the breath on glass effect. It might be a smoke effect from the Ring of Fire, I'm not sure to be honest but it blurs out anything other than Spyro and his name. And the placement of Nasty Nork feels really off. I know his boss fight at the end of the game is pathetic, but for being the main antagonist, they don't represent him as that in this image. He's placed in the same way as the bowl and is smaller, making him look like nothing more than a minor enemy in a stage. I have very mixed feelings on Spyro 1's American cover, but it's acceptable overall. I'll give this one a C. Spyro 1's cover for PAL regions, which are the following places, is basically another take on what was done for the North American box art. We still have the proudly displayed logo and titular character, but now with less fog. The smoke is still there, but it doesn't take over the screen. I do like how it's used here a lot, with the foggy effect over the purple of the night sky. You get to see Nasty Nork a bit more, and a bit clearer. He may not be a massive lumberjack Eggman, but the way he stood a good distance behind Spyro, looking at him angrily? Is he hungry? I can't tell. He just looks that little bit more menacing to me, rather than just being there in the background. Also, the bull is on fire! Well, I guess that's dinner sorted. So, I'm not complaining. Speaking of the flames, they're implemented very well. 
Spyro 1 may not be about the world ending, but the flames leave enough of an impact to show you that Spyro is not to be messed with. The castle looks a bit bad, like a cut out bit of paper, but hey, you can't win them all. This is still a solid piece of art. B+. Plus. Now, as for the Japanese cover of Spyro the Dragon, this one does more of its own thing. Yes, it's still set in artisans, but this time it's geographically accurate. Japanese branches of game companies seem to prefer cutesy characters over aggressive looking ones, and I must say, Spyro is pretty damn cute here. He looks like he'd have the voice of Mr. Tumble. The environment looks very fantasy and fairy tale esque, which Spyro the Dragon is. It looks like Spyro rather than. Doom. Like I said, I like the PAL cover, but this fits the vibe of Spyro and his world a lot more. You've got an energetic protagonist, his companion, and some enemies and collectibles scattered around the area. You've even got the little entrance stones to Sunny Flight over to the right. And Sega Dr. Seuss it! Did you know that Spyro's name in Japanese? Yes. And if you can believe it, the castle actually looks good on this one. Oh my god. They went for more of a 3D look for this cover, better representing this world. As you can see, the Japanese boxes for PS1 games, and for a few other consoles, didn't feel the need to have a massive label telling you what system a game is for. Just a little logo, they'll, they'll get it. Over here, on the other hand, Oh, that's why it didn't work in my toaster. From doing this, they had more space to make nice looking art. We have some damn fine cover art here in the power regions, but you get what I mean. All in all, this cover is amazing and it wins the Spyro 1 round. I'm gonna go as far as to say this gets an A+. Okay, maybe I'm overloading you with all this Spyro art. Well... Why don't we take a break and have a look at the PlayStation hoodie. The PlayStation hoodie has all the essential features of a good hoodie, such as the circle button. It's also big, because I am small. It's really comfortable and great game review wear. Its soft texture can get you through almost any game, no matter how great or how crappy. The only problem it has is that this is the NTSC version, so it doesn't work in my PlayStation. Now, it's time to move on to Spyro 2. And once again, the North American cover is the worst one. I reckon Cadicorus said it best himself. What the hell is all this about? There's minimalist and then there's just copy pasting images on a textured background. This looks like a PowerPoint intro slide. They just got a model of Spyro and plonked him there with flames in the background and possibly the worst looking Ripto hiding in those flames. This is just such a bland and unimaginative cover to me. What's Spyro standing on? Where is he? Why is the title different? And okay, that's a whole other discussion. I reckon it's time for me to take back over. Yeah, so we've got lazy, cheap, Ugly, creepy Ripto. All in all, this looks awful, and it makes me want to snap off Spyro's horns and beat him to death, Woody Minus. Yeah, not an F. It will get worse. Not necessarily in this part, but it will get worse. Trust me. Most of Europe, parts of Africa, and Asia, South America, Greenland. We need to fill some time as we are limited. Australia, New Zealand. Why am I still going? Someone wants to be back. This is irritating stuff. Now I'm really pissed off about my job because I do not get paid enough. Anyway, Spyro 2 cover art. 
This is better than what America got, that's for sure. Well, as well as the rest of North America and a few countries in South America. But anyway, 2.0, we see a lava lizard chasing after Spiral the Damned. Meanwhile, Spiral is totally cool and in the zone, or something. In terms of living being imagery, this is much better than what we've got, because they look half decent here. I'm not sure about the doorstop tail that Spyro has, but whatever. The title is in distinct enough colours that it stands out the right amount and is aesthetically pleasing. The mix of purple, green and orange feels very natural. Or Halloween, if you will. However, like with Spyro 1's cover in THE building, I'm not a fan of the blurred background. That one, it was meant to be a smoke effect, but here, it's quite literally just blown. What is it even supposed to be? I used to think it was Skelos Badlands because Lava Lizard, but no, this is Sandland. And I didn't notice this until writing this bit of the script, but what the hell is up with Spyro's eyes? It's the eye of the Spyro, I think I'm gonna die. I'll give this one a C. Like Spyro 1's North American cover, this isn't great, but it's not bad either. And here's the Japanese cover for Spyro 2, Ripto's Glimmer. That sounds like a brand of makeup. I don't know why someone removed the PS1 logo for the image I downloaded, but that's not really what we're looking at anyway, so yeah. I really like this cover. Like with the first game's Japanese box art, this shows off the world of the game really well. There are small details representing the various locations you visit, and some important characters you'll meet, namely Moneybags, Elora, and Hunter. This is a really charming piece of art. I'd say my favourite out of these Spyro 2 ones. There's only one thing that bothers me about it. Spyro's teeth. Make that two things actually, his, his eyes. But at least they don't throw you across the Spyroverse. For those being the only two problems I have with this, I'll give it a damn solid A-. minus. I guess these covers are only as good as they are to make up for the terrible Japanese ports of the first two Spyro games. Spyro 3, my favourite game in the series with another American cover that I don't like. If you haven't gathered by now, you'll see was code for the North American covers usually aren't very good. Spiral is fine, his usual determined self, but his friends do not look like friends. They look evil. Like they're all looking at him because they plan to kill him and feast on his carcass. The logo is nice and is placed well. I don't like the blurred Aurora, Spyro, Alice, red and yellow crap going on here. What is it with these covers and blurring? It isn't as unappealing to me as the Ripto's Rage cover though, so... D. Spyro Year of the Dragon's box art in Power Legends. Well... First off, two pack reference. Second, Dopey Bentley is better than Evil Bentley. No one looks evil anymore, except maybe Agent 9. I think she must get me shot off camera. Sparks is in the sink, desperately trying not to go down the drain, and Sergeant Bird doesn't really know what's going on. I like the lilac background a lot, and Spyro is a total dude on his skateboard. I love all of that stuff. It's
it'd be good if you could see more of the logo and in its own space. Which is a point to America, I guess. And I just realised that Spyro's evil eyes are on the cover. Why is that grim though? I'm kind of scared. Another thing to be expected of these covers, terrifying faces. This is still a good cover though. Even if the background carries it a lot. I'll give it a B. Now, as for Spyro 3's Japanese... Wait. Where is everyone? Oh yeah. Game never released in Japan. How about a Tombi 2 themed music box? That was something. There was good. There was bad. There was scary. And there was that Tombi music box animation thing you just saw. Um, thanks to my friend Cal Geeks Out for animating that and um, Atanoxy um, for doing like the, the music. Um, if I'm saying that right. Um, yeah, so I suppose that concludes part one, if I do indeed make more parts, of covering <laughs> Spyro the Dragon box art. Um, but yeah, uh, this was, this was pretty fun to make, for what it's worth. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this, if indeed you did watch it. Enjoy your being. Goodbye.